Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, it's always me introducing, isn't it? Or not intro, but starting. But anyway. I thought about that the other day. I was thinking when we did the last episode, before we did it, I was like, oh, I should surprise them in by just absolutely launching into this one as the, the main host. But <laughs> Go on then, bro. Go on. Do you know what? I always position myself in anything I do. I don't know oh. if this is... I always prefer to be the second in line as opposed to the leader. I don't know. You, I know you're smart, a... bro. That's why. Really? <laughs> anything, even at work, bro, I always prefer to be... I always actively seek out to be just second. Not, I don't like being third or fourth, or whatever. And I definitely yeah. don't like being first. But yeah. second is always like yeah. my ideal. I'm pretty sure that's one of the kind of rules in like Art of War or something like that. Really? It's like a strategic <laughs> one. Yeah, it's like don't be third, don't be fourth, but don't be first either. Yeah, I feel like you've got so much responsibility when you're first that the pressure gets a bit too much. But if you're second, you've got enough influence to, if you want to sway the leader some particular way, mm -hmm. then you probably can. However, you're not bearing the full brunt of anything that goes wrong, <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, but then you're not so low that your opinion in, doesn't matter at all and you're not valued mm. whatsoever. Yeah. So, like, kind of like, it's kind of like uh, some Islamic movements or groups or whatever. As long as they're doing the social work in the, communities helping people out poor people this and that yeah. everyone loves them as soon as they go into politics everyone hates them you know yeah man. so it, it's a it's definitely a principle and it must be also in that what's that book robert green um 48 laws of power i oh, that's on my list yeah i i bought it years ago and i read the first like couple chapters and i was like whoa this is dark like this guy wants me to become shaitan <laughs> yeah. um, but now i think i can read it um with more just like reading it rather than like judging it while i'm reading it so i think i'll enjoy it you know it's like strategic thinking kind of thing yeah and um yeah and this is episode 84 of the mind house podcast by the way um i i I do, you know, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I do kind of have this mindset that like I'm kind of at war and it's like you can choose to not, you can choose to try and pretend you're not at war, but you are at war um, and, and there, are, there are enemies out there. And so you need to uh, strengthen yourself. You need to be alert. You need to be aware. You know, do you feel like that or? I was thinking about this uh a couple of days ago, I was telling my wife that in the sort of life I live where I'm, I do feel like I'm very isolated with my Islam uh, because I feel like I don't have, I sounds really, really pathetic, <laughs> but I don't have a social life down where I live at all whatsoever. I'll be honest. Absolutely mm -hmm. none. And that's not even an exaggeration. I go to work and I come home to my family, I go to work, come home to my family. And if I ever do go and socialize us up in London. So my day to day, at work is completely, um, you know, drowning with non-Muslim atmosphere, you know, and, and very British culture, etc. cetera. And um, I was telling her, I was saying, I don't understand how, I would say oh, I'm blessed, Allah, alhamdulillah, that I feel like I'm in a position where I'm very comfortably Muslim. I'm very openly Muslim in, in an environment where I would feel that anyone else would feel extremely pressure to, to conform to what's going on around them. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't feel that pressure whatsoever. And it's almost like, it's almost like the bat, like the whole battle of it all is almost quite beyond me because I started off on the right foot where I've established myself initially in this atmosphere, mm. in this environment as, okay, I'm Muslim. This is what I do. This is what I'm about. And like at Olympia, I'm not going to partake in a few of these things. But hello, I'm yeah. I'm a nice I'm a nice guy, and I'm you know polite and whatever. Um, <clears throat> and I was actually quite surprised because I thought I don't have any inclinations, I don't have any sort of temptations when it comes to this sort of you know environment. Yeah. Um, but there's people that I know that are in the same boat as me, in the same mm. you know type of work as me, who are Muslim, whatever, and they they really sort of get caught up in it and they get weak yeah. to it and yeah. Um, so I, think I think it's, everybody... it's about the categories that you are in, in people's minds, isn't yeah. it? So it's like, imagine, uh, I don't know, maybe not the best example, but imagine there's like three brothers, three sisters, right? 
and you're going to like go and like, I don't know, climb a tree, right? Like mm -hmm. generally, if two of the guys go to do it, they're going to go get the third brother and say, come on, let's go. They might not yeah. even consider that the girls would want to, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a big stereotype thing, but yeah, it's like, what, what category am I in, in people's minds? If in people's minds, I am, uh, the British, um, uh, same, same as them, same culture kind of thing, then they will expect certain things of me, isn't it? But if I'm entered into another category, like the weirdo category, the weirdo Muslim category, whatever, then they won't yeah. even, they'll be like, oh yeah, of course he's not doing this or doing that. And I, you yeah. know, one thing I, I noticed that when I was working as a teacher in London, um, one thing that stood out to people surprisingly, I mean, I was surprised, is that uh, it, you know, in, the, in my department, there's like seven teachers or so, they noticed, they all picked up on it that, that I didn't swear. And it seemed like I was the only one that didn't swear. And yeah. they actually noticed it. And until after like a month or two of me being there, one of the guys like made a joke about it, right? And then everyone started laughing like, oh yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like this yeah, guy's yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. And so those kind of <laughs> things, they, they cause people to kind of, you know, judge you in that way. Like, okay, he's, he's like That's that. He's not one yeah, of us. You reminded me, like there's been a running theme at work now which, and I'm not saying this to praise myself. If anything, I want to praise the Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala way before myself with regards to this, mm. is that I've, because uh, every day I'm working with someone different and they've all seemed to, I've noticed they all seem to say the same thing that they keep saying, I've got the patience of a saint. Mm. They keep saying that about the, the sort of jobs that we get sent to. Mm. And I see it, I see my behavior as part and parcel of me being Muslim and trying to represent Islam. Um, for example, I could be in a very heated situation that doesn't actually trigger me because I'm just dealing with the task at hand. And at every single second of that thing, I'm thinking about, I'm not thinking about representing my employers. I'm thinking about representing my Dean because I'm thinking this right now, this conversation could go South where I'm always very conscious of that. I look visibly different to everybody else. I am clearly, you know, quite evidently visibly Muslim or whatever. Um, if someone asks my name, I say it's Muhammad, etc. So all the signs are pointing towards me being Muslim. And that's all I think about. And I'm thinking this conversation or this heated discussion could either go south into a racist discussion where the person starts getting racist towards me, or um, there could be a positive impact out of this. And actually, I impress them based on who I am as a Muslim, as opposed to who I work for, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I will take that opportunity whenever some, because I've had it even a couple of nights ago, somebody was very, very, very pleased with the way I, I helped them. And they were like, oh, what's your name? What's your name? I need to get your name. And I told them straight up, like, oh, my name's Muhammad. And usually I don't say my first name. I don't go first name basis because I don't know. I just don't need to tell everybody my personal information like that. However, when it's a situation like that, I do so not because I want the praise for myself. I want the praise for this yes. religion that taught yeah. me this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I've noticed that people lose patience very quickly over things because everything is in the moment for them. Mm. However, in, and what we'd like to achieve as Muslims is that once we're in a heated and volatile situation and you are fe feeling personally attacked by whatever is going on in front of you, you want to think about the air and the benefit there and the patience that will be rewarded there and your recompense being given to you there in the sense that your rights will be returned to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't need to try and gra grab your rights right now from this person and get your revenge right now. Mm. Um, I'm not always like that. There are some occasions where I get upset um, based on someone's behavior, but you know, alhamdulillah, I, I, I'd like to think that most of the time when I deal with people, um, especially non-Muslims, that I don't, I don't have a personal attachment to people, like strangers, for example, because I don't give them the power to have any sort of, like their opinions don't mean much to me, if you know what I mean. I don't value their opinion. So whether it's, if it's a bad opinion about me, it doesn't really bother me because they're just, it's not someone I've given power to. You know, I don't, I haven't given them some sort of authority that I can value whatever opinion they have. And I think because of that, I can be patient with abuse from, from people. However, I think not just non-Muslims, but I think there are people in all, in all walks of life that they rely heavily on validation from any other person. And that can be either online, that could be in person, that could be someone's opinion. That's why the focus is always on 
you know, what I'm wearing, how I look, how I present myself, how do I look right now, what are people thinking about me? When that goes on all the time, the moment you hear something negative from somebody, it deeply affects you and deeply like breaks you down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's a state of mind that has to be developed or if it's a natural personality that people can have. I, ne I definitely know that I was way more conscious of people's opinions, you know, I don't know, when I was a teenager and stuff, like, and more so now, maybe because I've directed my energy and my brain space into more important things, um, that that doesn't bother me whatsoever. You know, mm. how do you feel about this sort of stuff? I think the, you know, like, I feel like the way it should be is that as you get older and you become, you know, your own man, you, you become more comfortable with who you are, understanding who you are, you know, the good things about that and the bad things. And therefore other people's opinions shouldn't be as important, but you do obviously find plenty of people who are 30, 40, and they still really care about what people think uh, about them. And I just feel like that might be that they haven't reached. I don't know. I, I, I feel like that should be normal maturity, right? That you mm. understand that you're, you're just, that you know yourself and you critique yourself enough that other people's opinions, people that know you less well th than you do, mm. th th they, they shouldn't matter as much. But you know what? I guess suppose like if you're not critiquing yourself, if you're not reflecting, then... You, you, you probably would give more weight to what people think, isn't it? Because that's the only thoughts or opinions that you have available to you. You don't have your own opinions of yourself because you're not mm. analyzing yourself. You know what I mean? I think, I think what me and you have in common with this sort of thing is a few things. It's, I don't think we're integrated into a social sort of, yeah market like everybody else's yes, or yeah. a lot of people can be mm. i think me and you have very much detached ourselves from yeah the yeah. the scene of you yeah. know socialization and, and how we mm. used to be at least like you know that kind of school sort of the school social sphere where there was just Cleats, this person yeah. and this person yeah and this person knows this person and it was like just and i remember that used to be heavily i used to i exported that into my out of school life when mm. i left school yeah. that was still very much alive in, in the city I lived in where this guy knows this person, this guy knows this person. And, mm. you know, there was just friends of friends of friends and everybody knew everybody. And then, yes, I was quite conscious of what people might think. And then also social media at the time I used it. And up until recently, I used it as a social platform. You know, I used it as a place to connect with other people on a social level, not on a business level or a creative level. Um, and due to that, yes, you're going to be like opinions, opinions, there's opinions everywhere and everyone's got something to say. When that got removed, so the real world application of that and the social circle application of that got removed and my social socialization became almost like an exported thing in the sense that I pick and choose when to engage in that and I can leave it whenever mm. I want. Yeah. And that's because my social circle is not even in the city I'm in. Yes. I can travel there, I can yeah. socialize and I can unplug yeah. from there and I'm no yeah. longer in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then with social media, one of the most powerful things, and I don't, I backtrack on this every now and again, but one of the most powerful things is, is if you do have social media is to remove yourself from your social media in the sense like there's not that many photos of you. You don't even have a profile picture. And I know, I know in the early days of social media, if someone didn't have a profile picture, it was deemed quite, I don't know, kind of like freshy behavior. <laughs> do you know um, what I mean? Like okay, yeah. it was, it was, and I remember there like was the always Twitter, this thing, um, like egg, egg picture. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, but then I actually started thinking deeply about this. And I always think like, what is it about the, the power of a profile picture really sort of intrigued me mm. because we, we manufacture the way we, we present ourselves online to the extent that we, you know, everybody wants the perfect profile picture, but what does that mm. say about who you're trying to be? Mm. Um, well, you're trying so to brand like, yourself, isn't it? Yeah, but it's it's like, but it's the conflict between: Are you actually a brand? Mm. Do you have a? What is your purpose on this platform? Is it because, is it you know social or is it business? Is it? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. Or are you? What are you doing? Like, what is it? So there's some people that I would say that's fine. Like some people like, 
that have like a personal brand in the sense that they themselves are like a speaker or do you know what I mean? Like some sort of thing where it relies on their image mm. because they are recognized for who they are. Mm. That makes perfect sense. But for the average layman, like the average Joe Muslim, you know, the, the what they call it, Ahmad Bakr and Zaid, <laughs> um, the profile picture is very heavily sort of um, focused on because they want to present themselves in the most p- p- perfect way. Yeah. Um, but then it, bec- but then I, I, at least for me, I found that it became a lot more about the way I looked as opposed to what I had to say or what I could share or what I could create. Um, and I remember speaking uh, to Faisal, Faisal a lot about this before. In fact, he's the one who made me think a lot deeply about it when he took a hiatus from social media for a while. And I see now that he's come back and rebranded himself in a particular way where it's more, he has something he wants to share. Like mm-hmm. He has a message that he wants to propagate, which yeah. is nice. And it's good to take that time away. Yeah. But my challenge to people, which, you know, like I said, I backtrack on it sometimes, but it's to basically see what you can do with your profile picture. Like remove yourself from what you put out there and see how much people will value your opinion without your image there. Mm. Because there's something about like, there's something about a message, a message being shared by an attractive person, quote unquote, mm. as opposed to the same message being shared by nobody. Like yeah. you can get like, You can get, you see all the time, you get like these, like, I don't know, attractive guys, hypothetically speaking, like posting something that is very basic, but it just goes through the roof because Mm. of the way they look, you know, Mm. and people want, people want that attention from that person. But if you get some unknown person putting that up, for example, it doesn't get shared as much. And it's Mm. it's, like attraction politics. Yes. Yes. I mean, like you, like Serum Masters, you've gone one step further, bro. You've completely like... uh, you know, you haven't got any personal sort of, you know, you've got Sierra Masters and you've got the YouTube, I suppose. But even like your YouTube is more, you know, if I went on your YouTube profile without looking at the thumbnails and stuff, I wouldn't know who mm. is, who's, who's mm. doing what. By, you know? by the way, though, yeah, I'm thinking that I have to put my face there now, right? Really? Because people connect with people and not things right? Yeah. Like rather than logos or whatever. So if you, even if you're not, and I learned this from business, like we built my business, Muslim CEO, we built it when we started it, right? Cause we had another name before and we weren't necessarily uh, dealing with just Muslims or whatever. But when we rebranded, we started day one with my partner, Muhammad as the face of it. And we're like, the only reason we're, we're putting him out there as a personal brand thing is because yeah. people will connect with it. And that yeah. was true. Like that worked, you know? Um, and so even if there are other people behind the business, other people working on it, we need one person to be the face of it. Right. And mm. uh, maybe, um, especially based on like the theory of Malik bin Nabi that I shared last episode, that Muslims are in a phase of their civilization where they're more obsessed with people than ideas now. Right. So, um, and even uh, we found this, that if you put sick videos out, but you're not Sheikh this and this, or you're not doctor this and this, you won't get as much mm. traction. Right. Um, mm. so, uh, I think it's partly human, right. That, that people just connect with people, but also Muslims as a, you know, as a people, uh, in the things that we all have been similar in terms of the, our cultures is that, yeah, we very much want to follow people. And so, for me, if I want to, I'm not selling anything on Sira Masters per se, but I'm selling ideas, if you like. And mm. in order for those ideas to be digestible and attractive, I need it to be a person there. And it, it, it doesn't mean I need to make the videos about me, but um, I need to have my face there. I need to say I'm a mean. They need to know my name. Yeah. Certain basic personal things. But you know what it is, bro, as well? I have to be honest that even this podcast, okay, because I, I'm a little more open in this podcast compared to my videos, I think that actually makes people listen more. Like it makes people, yeah. if I have anything of benefit to give, they're more likely to listen because they feel like, okay, I'm a real person, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So it's, it's difficult, right? Because we don't want that whole thing of seeking fame and ego mm. and stuff. But at the same time, it's beneficial if you want to like get a message out or something. Um, so maybe it's it goes da- back to what you're saying, like, why are you on social media? What's the idea here? You know? So since I started trying to take graphic design more seriously, I ended up following 
you know, maybe most of the people I follow now on social media, at least on Instagram, are graphic designers. And some of the, like 90% of the people I follow, if not almost all of them, none of them have a profile picture, like, like a visible person. Mm. It's always like a logo or, or some sort of visual that they've created. Mm. Um, and I think I've normalized that now to the extent that it's kind of taking me back to what the internet used to be for me before Facebook and before the social media we have mm. now. Like I remember being 13 or so on forums, on random forums on the internet. Mm. Like I was one of those guys on just random topic forums and all of those, like the internet back then was a cool username and a weird picture of your choice. Mm. And in the forums, your... they have those uh, animations at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have animation. I used to have a little signature. I used to, you know what I mean? You could be anyone you wanted to be on those things. You could mm. present yourself in any way you wanted mm -hmm. to. And, and it wasn't, and I remember specifically when Facebook came about and I still remember that the slow transition to Facebook where like half of the people at school used to, had Facebook and it was like, shall mm. I get involved? Shall I not? Shall I? And I remember when Facebook like was like, okay, you need to use your real name, you know? And the norm became use a picture of yourself mm, mm. and stuff like that. And that was really strange to me. Like, why can't I use like a cool, you know what I mean? Like a mm. cool um, sort of uh, nickname. Like, you know, mm. I, I always, I've always mm. been used to using, oh, what the hell has just popped up on my computer? What is that? Get away. Some sort of torrent thing just popped up. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, face, with the advent of Facebook, it was almost like it just forced people to be, quote unquote, the real them, but because it forced them to be the real them, it, it made it so that they manufactured who they really were yeah. in a way, instead of saying, this is my persona, mm. because in, because back in the early days of the internet, you had an online persona, but mm. not like a fake, I am a fake, you know, you know, my name is, you know, Muhammad, but I'm actually like a six foot flipping hench bodybuilder Pixie. or something like that. Yeah, no, you, you could be like, absolutely you know anonymous in the sense that you had some sort of, kind of like neo in the matrix anyone ever seen the matrix his name was neo because that was his username on the on the internet and he probably had like some sort of profile picture of a cat or something but that was mm. fine you know that was understandable mm. but now it's like they forced us to be the real us but none of us are happy with the real us so we had to doctor who we are in the yeah. sense like all of our profile photos are photoshopped mm. and um the way we present ourselves and the things, you know, the, 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 the stuff that we post online, look how, look how busy I am in my life and look at the stuff yeah. I'm doing, look at all the friends yeah. I have. And but bro, isn't I that, go. don't you think that is exactly how it is in real life? Like uh, we all try, it's all reputation and status. Like it's a very uh, human thing to be driven by being seen as a certain way. Right. And we know throughout history, mm. humans have been that way. The difference now is that uh, the way that we are, um, trying to present who we are like we do we, we okay let, we walk outside our door the way we dress um, the haircut we have uh, when we speak to people the way we speak um everything the phone you have mm. it's all uh trying to give off an image of who you want to be seen as being right yeah like that's true right then when you go online it's the same it's like okay how do i want people to see me the difference perhaps is that online you can doctor the image more right than in real life like in real life there's yeah. limits to how you can change your reality in it yeah i'm very aware that this what we're talking about is in absolute overdrive in people that we don't follow because we're not interested in those people you know mm. i'm sure instagram to the average teenage girl is like 1000 percent worse than what i'm saying now oh, you know yeah. what i'm trying to say yeah. I, I feel like it's very concentrated in that sort of demographic or yeah. any teenager for example in that demographic is going to be wild um I just think in, in, in the real world, at least from my perspective, you want to be known for the more unconscious things of your personality, such as mm. your kindness and your generosity and your humbleness and stuff mm. should be more of an unconscious mm. thing as opposed to an active, I want yeah. to show people this. Yes, yes, but on, yes. on, on social media, you have to, to highlight that. You have to yeah. actively show you it. You have to intentionally like those, show it, yeah. Yeah, it's like those, and you see them, man, like, you see those posts where it's like, yo, you are definitely posting this because you want people to know how charitable you are. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like humble um, brag posts, <laughs> humble brag posts. And those are active sort of, Hey, yeah. look at me, yeah. check this yeah. out sort yeah. of thing. Now, this um, is exactly where we need to check ourselves though, because 
easily you can you can act like the you have a good intention behind that, isn't it? But uh, yeah. reality is, it's uh, yeah. But you know, bro, going back to what you were saying about me and you, we're like detached from a social circle. And even I'm like you, exactly what you said. Like, if I want to not see any friends, I can because, like, geographically, I'm not in the same yeah. location, right? Um, yeah, exactly. And I think that that has a significant effect on us. But, um, and, and like, so for example, when I was at work in Dubai or in London or whatever, right, I very easily like um, set who I am. I kind of, I guess I, I, day one, I give my brand there and there, you know, there, then and there. Yeah. I, I'm like this, I'm like that kind of thing, right? Obviously, I don't tell them that directly, but within a week or two, they, they're like, okay, I know this guy's boundaries, what he's like and stuff and stuff, yeah? Um, and so therefore, because I, I'm in a different category to them, in my mind and in their mind, I'm not trying to impress them. I'm not trying to blah, blah, blah. And it's very kind of freeing and nice, right? However, yeah. no doubt I have circles where I am tempted to kind of show that I'm better than I am, or I am trying to project a certain image, right? Like I yeah. remember once I went to a, it was kind of like a, a business uh, network dinner kind of thing. So it was like all different people in Dubai, like business owners, we all like just just to really um, having dinner and like I went there to try and find clients, right? <laughs> and I was younger yeah. and stuff then and I was the, uh, I wasn't the youngest because I had a very young friend with me, but I was the second youngest in the room, like by five years, maybe 10 years. And uh, it was very weird, awkward. I didn't fit in whatsoever again, even though we're all like business people, but I felt a pressure to speak about my business as though, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing that, you know? And so, although maybe in a, a work setting or certain settings, I don't feel that pressure. Like I'm in the same category as you and therefore I'm competing with you. I need to show, but in other settings, I am like that. Like that's yeah. reality, I think. And you must like find yourself sometimes in those situations as well. No. Yeah, I guess so. I think, um, Sometimes you have to be real with yourself though. Like there, just because I say the things I've just said doesn't mean yeah. that there isn't times where you look online and you're like, Oh, you feel some sort of like envy for yeah. me, yeah. for the, but that's, I think that is where we also have to check ourselves as well. You have to keep reminding yourself that this is just a, a highlight reel, isn't it? Um, yeah. I spoke about this many times before, but you're just seeing a highlight of what people want to show you and the mm. life they want to live. Mm. Um, but something, some sort of, a pleasure of mine is to be able to do things and have people guessing what I'm up to in my life. Mm. Like I, I kind of like it sometimes where people message me and they're like, Oh bro, I haven't seen you. Like I haven't seen you post anything in ages or do you know what I mean? Like where have you been or what's going on or whatever. And I've just been living my life in private, you know, and I've been, you know, I might not have been doing amazing things or whatever, but like, I don't know. Like I went, I mean, I'll say it now. Like I went to, I went to an aquarium the other day. Oh, he, he said it, guys. <laughs> he yeah, said I it. I said it, bro. <laughs> I went to the aquarium the other day, man, and I spent like 10 minutes in there. Mm. 10 minutes, bro. Mm. Was it my, free entry? My, no, I paid for it, but my oh. son, I thought, oh, he, I thought Suleiman was old enough to really enjoy it now. You know, he's three years old. He likes wildlife and stuff. He'll enjoy it. Mm. But because he was so excited, he was really excited he would not stop at any attraction because he just wanted to see the next thing immediately. <laughs> yeah. So he like ran through the whole thing, bro. Like some of the main attractions, he just run straight through the thing. Like, and I had to chase him and I lost him at one point. I chased him and grabbed him and dragged him all the way back so he could enjoy it properly. I'm like, stare at that shark. <laughs> <laughs> you know I paid what I mean? for that oh, shark. <laughs> I paid for this. Oh man. So, um, yeah, it was a bit wild, but, and then I realized, like, yeah, I did enjoy myself for those 10 minutes or so, like, looking at a few things. I definitely want to go back again because 10 minutes wasn't enough. Mm. But then I was like, oh, I did that whole thing without posting anything of it online when that is something you would typically – I don't think I posted anything anyway. Pretty sure mm. I didn't. But that was something you typically wouldn't, Yeah, you know. you Typically, that's – oh, yeah, that's one of the things you'd post online. Like, look where I am and look what I'm up to sort of thing. And I was like, that's – that's cool. Like, I like that. I like that. No one needs to know that I did that, you know, or whatever. Mm. Um, and it's just, I don't know. It, it makes you value things more, man. Mm. Um, it makes you live in that moment a bit more. Yeah. Um, and even, even in that moment in the aquarium, 
you would be thinking of what to post to kind of promote a certain side of your brand, isn't it? Right. So if you, if yeah, you yeah. want to, if you want to project yourself as the uh, deep thinker guy, then you might like put a shark picture and think of a little quote at the bottom or a little caption. Yeah. 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 And if you yeah. like want to be like, Oh, I'm the, I'm the religious guy. I'm the student of knowledge guy. Then you'd be like, Oh, you remember chef? He said a shark is like this and that. Yeah. <laughs> like trying to pull the front. <laughs> So oh, man. you try and turn the occasion into something that shows like, what you want people to think of you. Yeah. 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 I'm just checking. I just want to, I don't want to eat my words, but I just want to check. No, I don't No, I definitely didn't post anything about it then. Yeah. Mm. So, so that's cool to me. Like the fact that I know it's really pathetic that in, in this day and age, <laughs> we have to talk, we have to praise people that don't post stuff about their lives. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. But I think it's, mm. but then again, it depends what people are actively chasing. Like, when it comes to social media, are you actively like the, the okay with Instagram, for example, you're they say, because I've looked at even when I had you know pure science stuff, you look at how can I make my page grow? And that's from a business angle. And a lot of the one of the most fundamental things they talk about is like you just need to post very often. So you need to just keep putting stuff out there, mm -hmm. to keep putting content out there because mm -hmm. content gets consumed. So I think for a lot of people, it's like, oh, I need to post something. I need to post something. I need to post something. What's it about? What is it going to be? Like, what am I going to do? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, or do people, I don't, because that's the kind of environment I use Instagram now. I don't know what it's like to just have a quote unquote personal account, if you know mm. what I mean, where it's mm. just like me and my friends. Mm. Like, do people think about followers when it's just them and their friends? Mm. Or do they think that there's some sort of like light at the end of the tunnel becoming an influencer or something? Mm. is the influencer lifestyle dead like i don't know i feel there's that discussion because even like in marketing and business now i don't know how much power influencers have anymore um when i when we're talking about like low level influencers not like celebrities um but even now you've got like people of celebrity status that have done nothing but just post stuff online if you know what i mean they're not known for any sort of yeah media they've produced or acting mm. or god knows what else mm. um it's just a weird time to be alive, man. Yeah. 2020. You know, um, some of the negative comments we got from episode 82, I was, mm. I, I, I think I've done one video in the past where I got a lot of negative comments. I'm talking a lot. Yeah. I'm talking tens yeah. and tens of, of negative comments. It was, it's not the most uh, proud video I did, but it was, let's just say it had Adam Saleh in the title. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and it, no. I think it's my most viewed video, but I, I think I put it on private now. Um, just didn't want to be associated with that really. Um, but that video, it got a lot of um, negative, it actually it got positive well, but it did get a lot of negative comments. And that was maybe the first time where I started thinking and, and like really kind of thinking about, I don't know if the word is it hurt me or it just made mm. me question myself maybe, right? And yeah. what you notice with some of these comments is that they get personal, right? So they, they might be mad at what you said, but they're not talking about what you said. They're not talking about the idea. They're talking about you, right? And they make it yeah. personal. And I was just imagining that these people, um, YouTubers and stuff, like how do they deal with it? Because um, like we only got like two actual proper negative comments, like two, three or something like that, right? Yep. And and it had me thinking, so what about these people who every video, they might get a hundred negative comments. Yeah. And I'm talking yeah. even about like, you know, people like whatever, like Ali Dawa and stuff, they're not the hugest kind of audiences, but is, I don't, I don't know if, if humans are really equipped for that at all because. Yeah, it's, it's mad, yeah. isn't it? You've got to, especially for, especially for people that don't have a, god given purpose to do something like when mm. it comes to days and yeah. you know shuk and stuff i think primarily because they should be doing it and i assume they're doing it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's like dirt off your shoulders kind of thing when it comes to those comments like you can easily you can convince yourself that this is part of the dawah mm. this is part of my journey to give dawah comments like this don't matter because my most fundamental thing is this mm. mission that i've got towards mm. me however like when i think about people that are outside of that uh, like, you know, like you mentioned, like just your, your everyday YouTuber or, you know, a lot of these celebrity YouTubers and, and, and social media influencers and yeah. all that stuff. I'm thinking raw, like, 
this is insane. Like, even the most recently, like one thing that hit my radar when it comes to celebrity news was like, um, I don't know if you came across like Will Smith and his wife, and there was this big sort of scandal going on. That basically, like Will Smith is like the Hollywood good guy, right? And I don't know your opinion on him, but I've always thought he's a he's an awesome guy. Like he just seems like a nice, genuine mm-hmm. person. And I've always sort of, you know, I don't know if looked up to him is the right word, but in in the non-Muslim world of things, I just think, oh, he's 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 awesome. He's a pretty cool guy. And then you see his family and stuff. You think, oh, he's a married guy. He's been married for years. He's got you know three kids or whatever. He just seems cool and genuine. And then like there was this big scandal that like his wife had cheated on him with his permission or something like that. Like his wife had basically got into a relationship with some other guy that was way younger than her, than, than both of them. And the allegation was like, Will Smith kind of approved that. It was a big thing on the social media and stuff. And then I was like, oh, that can't be true. Like, whatever. And then like, they both came out and more or less admitted like, yeah, they were on some sort of relationship break. And I don't know, he wasn't fussed about it or something along those lines. Anyway, 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 the, the, I just thought like the flipping world of, of media and comments and all that stuff being said and to this overly positive individual, like I always see him, he presents himself as a very overly positive, like everything can be good if you look at it in a specific way. And I just thought, man, because people were making fun of him and there was loads of memes and stuff and all this other stuff, which to be honest, I thought was double standards because if it was the other way around, I know the feminist, the feminist wave would have defended the woman to death, but because it's been flipped, that he's now the the quote unquote victim of this sort of thing, that everybody found it funny, and you know, anyway, she sort of demasculated him, if you want, if you know what I mean. But I just found it like, okay, even the most positive of of people on the celebrity sphere can be so hard, hardly criticised and ridiculed for stuff. How do they survive when their their vision and mission isn't necessarily anything substantial like you can convince yourself that you've got yeah my message is to spread positivity around the world but that doesn't mean anything and i don't think that's everlasting like i don't think without allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and without like this knowing what the world's really about because everybody's guessing otherwise you know everybody everybody slaps a purpose onto their their living right are you still there i think your mic's muted bro yeah, I was muted. There you go. go. Mm. Sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, everybody who isn't, I'd, I'd say, religious in a sense, kind of slaps this sort of like, this is why I think the world is about. This is why I think the meaning of life is. And if you're just like, kind of like stabbing in the dark with what you think the meaning of life is, then I feel like you don't have, you're, you're always standing on shaky ground. You're susceptible to just being absolutely obliterated yeah. by something that happens in yeah. life, you know? Yeah. Um, but like, for for the believer being the lair, it's like you can you can be hit hard, but when you're hit hard with knowing that Allah tests you, then it's like, well, I'm hit hard, but I know this is a test. Like I know deeply yeah, yeah. this is what Allah yeah. tells you. But for 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 people like that, bro, I just think, mm. how can you keep going? And and I just think, yeah, this is why depression and it's why suicide and stuff like this can be. I'm not saying it doesn't exist in the Muslim community. Of course it does. You know, of course it does. But when I think of its prevalence elsewhere, I'm just like, rah, I don't know how they survive. That's what my ultimate message is. I don't know how yeah. people can live without that God consciousness and knowing why they're here. Mm. And even, I don't know why I always do this. I think I have a good reason deep down, but I always take things back to like, the normal way and the normal way meaning like the way humans have lived for like most of our history right mm. normal way of living is you wouldn't be able to receive a hundred negative comments from people in one day or maybe even one week right because of yeah because like being on youtube is a one-to-many relationship whereas in in normal living it's one-to-one every it's all many one-to-ones so you get the point so um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if humans really are equipped for that, man. Um, and there are, there are obviously a certain people who've been heavily criticized in the, in the past. Like, uh, I don't know, the Prophet Sallam was attacked a lot, but like you said, like maybe they had that substance behind them, even if they're not necessarily Muslim, but specifically Muslims and du'at, like if you're a da'ya, you, you have the, um, knowledge that the Prophet Sallam and the prophets were all tested and they all had, 
in the Quran, Allah says, um, Aduan minal mujrimin. We every messenger had a, an enemy from from the criminals. I think that's the area. Um, so it's like you know that, right? You kind of can can get ready for that. But yeah, these people um, would really struggle. But it even made me think, bro. Like, imagine um, like some of the things we said, and people didn't didn't agree with it, right? And, it, and the way it made, I don't know how you, if it made you feel a certain way or think certain things or doubt yourself, but imagine, um, I, I can see very, very clearly how the average da'ya who has a presence online would actually avoid and hesitate to talk about certain topics and share their, you know, just be 100% real, right? Because yeah. of that, um, you can yeah. really, like, you can really see how that would happen, man. And that's the kind of is- scary. What you've got to remember as well is that there's foundations that are behind all of that. For example, like there's foundations at risk that people don't think about too much. Like there's a lot of people on the sidelines that think, why doesn't this shit speak about this thing? Why doesn't this day talk about this issue that's going on? Yeah, right? yeah. Thinking that, yeah, the other person, so give them all the responsibility of basically putting their whole livelihood at risk. Mm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like it's easy for, it's easy for people on the, on the sidelines and couch you know, couch critics to say, this person should do this. And this goes, this extends even beyond just, um, just days and stuff. This extends to like world leaders, bro. Mm. Like we say to, we, we sit, and I'm not trying to make a political statement here. I just think it's something we should deeply think about, but like, I don't know, let's think of recently, like there was an Erdogan thing about Hagia Sophia being returned back into a mosque. Right. Yeah. And I remember some people, you know, a lot of Muslims were like happy about it. And some Muslims were like, Oh, that's nothing. That's just a, they, he needs to do more. Look what's happening here. Look what's happening <laughs> yeah, here. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's easy. It's easy to speak like that. But like, you're not thinking about like the repercussions on it. It doesn't even have to be a deep level, even on a basic level. The repercussions in this climate of doing anything very substantial is just absolute erasure mm. for your, for your, any sort of influence mm. you may Could have. Be, yeah. Like, look at, look at, biggest example of this in recent times is like the Morsi thing, you know, when President Morsi came into power and he, people were like, oh, wow, look, he's very vocal about Islam and look how loud he is and stuff like that. And, <clears throat> you know, I think part of because of his message and I'm not, I'm not particularly trying to make a comment about Muslim Brotherhood or whatever. I'm just talking about generally speaking, he visibly presented himself as a Muslim mm, and he he's about Islam like and he's months. trying to, mm. bro. So like, I just think that People are very naive. Muslims have become so naive yeah. um, with the whole. It's easy to comment from the sidelines. It's easy to say, "Hey, look at look look at that person. He's got all this power and authority. Why doesn't he just, you know, click his fingers and solve the problem in Palestine? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah, yeah. click his fingers and and or stop anyway. So I just think, ah, man, we're so we're so much deeper than that. Come on, yeah. we're better than that. Yeah. One thing I wanted. To, one thing. Go on. Oh, go on then. Go, 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 bro. Go on. Let me see. No, I was gonna say, um, it's troubling though to think. I'm not like, like, like you said. I'm not like specifically blaming or anything. I was saying that I can understand why they would hesitate, but it's very scary. If let's say you know you felt strongly about something. Let's say you know you're one of these big, um, you know, du'a or whatever. You have, you know whatever, 300,000 followers on whatever it is, Facebook or YouTube, whatever. Yeah. And you, you actually feel strongly that, you know, some of these e- extreme feminist ideas are damaging the Muslim family, right? And right. you have, you know, obviously because maybe you're an imam, you see what, what's happening in families and you're really concerned. And then you think, okay, well, the natural thing for me as someone who has to, you know, remind, give the reminders to the people and help the community and all that, is I have to talk about this, right? I have to deal with this topic. But now you can see how they're going to hesitate. And it's not just the topic of feminism. It's any topic where you will have a, a, a 10% or a 20% people yeah. who are going to hit back at you. And you don't know yeah. what, where they're going to take it. Like They could take it to your workplace and try and get you in trouble there. They could go to the board and say, get rid of him as, as an imam. They could, yeah. they could uh, try and find your address and do stuff. Like There's so much that can be done. And the result of that, I feel, is the dumbing down of just pe- speaking straight, straight talk, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's kind of the opposite of uh, just speak the truth, you know, even if yeah. you're 
voice shakes you know it's the opposite yeah, it's no. like what will they do what will happen and again like, like i i know what you mean like it, it, you can understand it but it's like wow we, we're in this place now where uh people are faced with that decision and i can see why they avoid it and avoiding it is easy it's like okay let me just talk about the topics that which won't be that controversial but then yeah. the that pile of topics that you're avoiding talking about grows and grows and grows yeah and it can be navigated and i think a lot of the time like this is why it's important to travel and it's important to meet people in person and it's important to don't assume you know somebody just based on their social presence online social media presence online mm. or how they, they're online you know i mean there's plenty of sure that like they've never spoken about a specific topic online or you know on a public platform but like you sit with them privately and ask them about it and they'll talk to you about it you know yeah. you know and that's that's just the truth and that's what that's what's judged really like we've turned the online world into the real life we've turned it into you know it used to be that you could watch tv and you would know that tv is manufactured if you know what I mean, you would know that whatever I'm watching on that TV screen is what they're trying to present to me. However, when we look online, we don't think about the internet as a, a, oh, this is what they're trying to present to me because it's social media and it's so intertwined into life and into day to day. We almost treat social media as if that is life, like the day to day. Oh, you know, because it's gone into this personal level. Like this is what the thing about podcasts as well. Like podcasts appeal is that it's gone into this personal level that goes beyond just a TV screen and a manufactured programming. It, it's actually, you know, it's like a box into real life. You know, this is a real life view right now. And we, we've we gone to like reality sort of um, vlogging and YouTube and, and this sort of stuff where we've treated the internet in this sense as like a mirror of the real world when actually it's not. It's just another self of manufacturing, you know, that's tackling things at another angle. So you can't judge people based on that. Like, I don't know if you ever watched like TV presenters on the new on on TV or news presenters and stuff. You don't look, claim to know what that person is like just based on their news reporting. Yeah, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like this, you could see the same TV the same news presenter every night at whatever the six o'clock news or whatever it is, and you wouldn't be like, oh yeah, I know what that guy's about. I know what he's like. No, because mm -hmm. you know that he's presenting something in a very manufactured way. Mm -hmm. But then when he comes to now looking at people online. We, we always assume that that's who they are. Mm. But actually, no, you need to actually sit with somebody to really get to know them. Mm. Mm. Um, I think social media is like, or maybe the internet, like all the different ways that the internet, you know, manifests. It takes a lot of the, like the key, normal, natural human traits, good and bad, and it just yeah. amplifies them, isn't it? Like it yeah, just yeah, yeah. turns it all up a notch. And uh, it's worrying, man, because like even even uh, I think it was Salman Butt was was talking about how people's maybe this is more in the West. I'm not sure people's awareness of topics, yani in Islam, like it's it's their exposure to Islamic knowledge is could be like seventy percent through the lens of gossip slash refutation slash you know talking about other people kind of thing and it's like yeah. wow it's like that that's not a good place man because you don't have the foundation and it, it and that you could blame it fully on like the youtube algorithm right because the youtube yeah. algorithm will uh favor uh, watch time engagement loads of comments even positive you know if you dislike a video that helps that boosts it right you might think it's not, but it boosts it because it's like, okay, this person felt positively enough or negatively enough to, to so like or dislike. Therefore, they engage. Therefore, it's yeah. an engaging video, right? Yeah, so, because, yeah, I know what you mean. So what YouTube is doing, it's like, okay, uh, give them all this stuff. Give them all the refutations. But, you know, the fiqh of wudu, uh, it, it gets left with 100 views, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 true. Uh, and what true, does that you need do to, for our... Because you need to really, like, I need to really dislike something to give it a downvote, thinking mm. that I'm, I'm mm. sending it mm. to, to, the, to the pits of the underworld by yeah. downvoting it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. Um, I'm probably just making it, yeah, rank more controversially and, and higher yeah. up somewhere. And, and this is, like, literally, like, people in Silicon Valley have made this algorithm and it's actually affecting our 
our deen. You know, it's affecting our perception yeah. of sharia, of fiqh, of this and that. It's, it's really crazy. And it's all uh, centralized systems, right? So with cloud computing, everything, you have that. You have, you know, TikTok, which is based in China, etc. You have that influencing, you know, hundreds of millions of people in the Muslim world, in America, in this and that. And, and they're choosing like what influences our society. So, you know, when you think of, okay, how does that apply to, okay, not just Islamic knowledge, but my schooling, my general knowledge, my biases, yeah. my this, my that, it, it amplifies it. And it, what it does ultimately, all these kind of technologies, all it does, it, it, it seems to concentrate power and influence in less hands. Yeah, true. It's kind of scary, man. Yeah. But we can we can exit it, like we can unplug, right? But you just have to sacrifice, I think. And yeah, I mean, yeah, Sharif well, is like kind of unplugged, but he still spends a lot of time on YouTube. <laughs> but I think I, I would imagine, yeah, Sharif is the type of guy who he has the discipline to stay on topic on YouTube, for example. Yeah, yeah. And and that's yeah. like so we can't fully just blame the algorithm, like. He's he just seems like that guy who's got the work ethic, got the focus. I'm here to do this. I'm not here to like get into gossip and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like. I'll be honest. Like the algorithm has 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 served me well, really. Yeah. But at the same time, if if there's anybody that has an inch of of negativity, then mm. the algorithm is going to turn that into a mile because it's just going to amplify what they have already. Yeah. You no, know, this is the thing. It's amplifying what it's already within you. Yeah. As opposed to, because um, you're not going to just start getting, I don't know, baking stuff if you're into, I don't know, fishing, <laughs> for example, whatever, you know, <laughs> like it's it's going to amplify what you're into and yeah. what's going to appeal to you. Um, yeah, but would you, it, it, it does have that element, but it also has the element of you actually might, you'll find it more difficult to find more serious things, right? Yeah. So if yeah. you watch, if you actively search, right? So you, you're the one choosing here. You go and search, uh, I don't know, Maliki Fiqh, Fiqh al-Wudu, okay? And you watch a video, okay, he teaches you the Fiqh al-Wudu, yeah? It's got like two likes and zero comments and like 50 views, yeah? Now, YouTube probably won't recommend other Fiqh um, like lessons, right? Because yeah. there might be a shorter video, catchier video, that has the word fiqh in the title, but it's like some controversial issue around fiqh and that's what it will show yeah. you. So it's like shaitan literally distracting you from what's important and pushing you to what's just distracting you from Allah. Have you, I don't know how I've come across this. Mm. I must have seen it advertised the other day. There's this website called Their Tube. Have you ever heard of it? Their no. Tube. Okay. Well, okay. Not. So what it is, is um, this, the blurb is how do the recommended videos look on their YouTube page, homepage? So basically, <clears throat> it's more of a political thing, but it shows you what a, a, a YouTube algorithm would look like on the typical person who's into a certain thing. So mm. the, the op, they've only got six options here, and I think mm. it's more um, American based, but it's like they've got fruitarian, they've got prepper, like doomsday mm. preppers, mm. they've got a liberal, they've got mm. conservative, and they've got conspiracist and a climate denier. So, like, you would click on one of them. So, let's yeah. take cons conspiracist, for example, and it will show you. Okay, my, this is what. Yo, bro, that's my feed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like, this is what they would look like. So, the persona is based on a person who was deeply into conspiracy theories. The videos recommended in this YouTube account tend to suggest global events are, in fact, conspiracies. Yeah. Uh, watch videos from BuzzFeed Unsolved Network, uncover the truth, blah, blah, blah. And then like, so the, some of the videos are like racist eugenist, incredible Alcatraz prison break, um, I don't know, US crackdown on Chinese government, Pizzagate, I don't know if you heard about the Pizzagate conspiracy. Oh, that one's that dark, man. You're, you're, you're unplugged, man. You need, to, you need to look into these things, man. <laughs> but um, don't get me started on UFOs, man. I've been, dude, there's been... I don't know if you've heard, man. Like this, look at this article, bro. This is from the New York Times. No, right? no longer in shadows. Pentagon's UFO unit will will make some findings public. The Pentagon so has a UFO like, unit, yeah. Yeah. So they released like three. They declassified three, uh, three uh, videos from the military or the Navy mm. uh, from jet fighters, pilots, mm. and mm. they've even stated that 
bro, this is the mad one, right? Where is it? Oh man, I'm not going to find it now. They've even stated that they have off-world vehicles not made from this Earth, man. Not even gassing. Like, for how real, did they uh, determine that? Well, this is just a statement, an official statement from them as an organ, well, not just an organization, but people in that organization. Mm, okay. Even uh, one of the senators, what's his name? Marco Rubio? Mm. He's a senator, isn't he? Yeah, he's mm. a senator over in America. It's, it's something to do with the intelligence or whatever. And he was talking about it. And uh, like now, apparently, every six months, they're going to release these findings. And the three videos that they declassified are videos that I've, I've seen one of them, like in 2017 or whatever. Bro, it's crazy, man. Like, they've officially said that, yes, there's stuff that's not of this planet that we have or come in contact with. And there's also, uh, the way that Marco Rubio, the Senate, puts it, it's like, this is technology that we've never seen before that nobody has. And we mm. need to find out what's going on and what it is. Mm. Like, if you, I watched the Joe Rogan clip. He talks a lot about this sort of stuff. But he, he interviewed one of the pilots. I watched it for like 20 minutes. And... His pilot is like not even like a young guy. He's like a, I don't know, he might be like my dad's age or something. And he's like, you could just tell he's like properly talking about what he'd experienced and what he mm. saw and how he described it word for word. And even yeah. they brought up the video footage that was in line with what where he was and what happened because mm. he'd gone out, seen it, came back, and then his colleagues went out, saw it, and they recorded it. And mm. he was exp he was basically dissecting their video footage and saying, okay. this is what this means. And he said, bro, that like this object that was flying was actively disrupting their scanners. Like that's mm. what I found incredible. Right? Actively. So, actively. So they couldn't lock mm. onto it uh, automatically because it, what would it would do is like, there's this range finder, you know, all these numbers and stuff on the screen when it comes to like all these kind of footage that they have. Like in the movies. Yeah, like in the movies. He said like one of them is like a range finder. Oh. And it like, the, he, he pointed out that the number was like 9999. Mm. which meant like this thing was trying to scan for this object that he was visibly seeing, but it couldn't hit it, yeah, yeah. which he said as a, I don't know, an expert, he said like, that means like that thing is basically, it's not like stealth because he said the difference between stealth and active jamming is stealth is like trying to make something harder to, to notice you. So the way mm. he put it is like a barn door. Like let's say this is a barn door on my phone. You can see it very easily like that, right? Mm. The stealth technology is like if I turn it like that, mm. then you can't see it as much. Yes, that's okay. stealth technology. I'm not actively doing anything to you. I'm doing something to my object itself yes. or myself to make it harder to see. Okay. But he said like active jabbing is me sending something to you mm. and disrupting you. To jam you. your monitoring jam, thing. Yeah. yeah. So he's saying like this. Anyway, but bro, like, you know, this is, this is now, a lot of those best, actually. They could be doing something to sort of... um Hold up, I, I just got emailed the, the Mind, Heist, Mind Heist weekly chart rankings, which I okay. get every Monday. <laughs> but um, yeah, bro, like I've been looking into it because, I mean, 2020 is a crazy year. And <laughs> they're saying, them coming out with this stuff is either one big distraction technique, but I'm not that much of a conspiracy theorist to think that. Or, I don't know, bro, like, is it far-fetched to believe in other I mean... I used to always say, and I still sometimes lean towards, I don't know what my son's crying for, lean towards that this is like a jinn kind of thing, right? There's a lot of jinn out there. There's things, you know, we know that there's, we're told by the Prophet that there's different types of jinn. One of them is the ones that fly, you know, and that's, that's not beyond me. So when I see like these unidentified flying objects, I'm like, well, yeah, there's nothing saying that that can't be like some sort of jinn or some sort of other creation by the last part of the time. And then yeah. I thought, when I thought about like aliens and stuff like that, I was like, you know what? really and truthfully is there anything in the dean that absolutely like says no when it comes to that kind of stuff mm. and i don't i can't think of anything myself i could be completely wrong well, why not i can't think of anything what do you mean I, i'm saying I, I can't think of anything that draws a line that says that exactly. there is nothing out there do you know well, what i mean not? yeah why wouldn't there be exactly. like why not and when i thought i said to my wife and i was like you know there's nothing stopping you know i don't know about there's not, it's quite quite extreme, but there's nothing stopping like there being other life out there with their own. The message is the same. Like they've been sent the same message mm. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one, you know, because the way that this is being put online now is that this is such big news. Although it's not being reported on as much. And I think part of the reason it's not being reported on that highly is because news agencies, 
know that this has baggage, like crackpot baggage, so to speak. Mm. Like this is a conspiracy theory thing. Mm. But the New York New York Times were one of the most repu- rep- what was it called? Reputable. Mm. Reputable <laughs> news agencies in the world, really, is the one that broke the story and mm. how like legit this is. So I think it's paving the way, and I think they're trying to sort of change discourse onto it to make it a bit more serious. But bro, apparently, so yeah, every six months they're going to release new findings. They're pr- pretty much clear cut said that this isn't anything on our planet. Like there's mm. nothing, you know. Um, I used to think maybe it's like some sort of precursor, like the gel thing going on. You know, that's the 14 year old me coming out saying, hey, <laughs> this, they're getting ready. They're getting ready to bring the. And you know what? It's not even like that far fetched to me because I've always had the theory, like how can the Dejel come not to come to earth, but like present himself on earth. Where we, the lot of the hadith that I've read, or the 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 tafsir of the stuff that I've read, has been like, okay, the Dajjal is is likely or, or going to be a human being, right? Yes. Um. But that to me, that doesn't mean that he can't just be a human being with some sort of like extraterrestrial ac- ability. Because at the end of the day, we know that he is he is due to perform miracles, right? And we know that the people believe him to be some sort of deity or some sort of God or whatever. Yeah. And you have that now in sci-fi shows where you've got like this extraterrestrial being comes to earth and says, Oh, by the way, I made you lot, you know, I made humans or our race made you billions of years ago. And we come back mm. to, to, to get what we created. Like I remember there was, I this can't tell called... if that's a film or one of these conspiracy there... theories. So there is this, <laughs> there is this film called, I think it's called Prometheus. I think I only watched like the first 10 minutes of it, but the, the opening 10 minutes is like this alien on this like barren sort of planet, like absolute barren planet. Mm. turns out the planet is earth, mm. but it's like earth, like billions of years ago. And it's alien like lands and it, you see him like plant something into the ground. Mm. And essentially what that's meant to mean is like some alien life has planted life quote unquote <laughs> not may might not just be human but it could be just like a single celled organism or something yeah. onto earth which has then over you know millions of years in their minds for evolution created everything that is here today and then like it goes so far in the future that those humans that eventually came through the evolutionary track mm. or whatever have gone back and discovered their precursor whatever oh. race that created them if you know what i mean mm. um but that is something that keeps, you know, if any sort of sci-fi media or stuff that's consumed, that like that message is always there, man. And I, when I think about, hey, if the Dejel was to appear or whatever, like the sci-fi element of it is the most, if it was to happen today, I feel like the sci-fi route of trying to, uh, what's the word, uh, deceive people, because that is what the Dejel is, a deceiver, that would be the most appropriate way in this day and age. I think if like, if, a, if, a, if some sort of being or some sort of extraterrestrial thing came to earth and stated, by the way, uh, we're the ones who created you or we're the, you know, we're your Lords or we're your masters, or whatever, or I'm your master, etc. You need to follow me. Look at the stuff that we can do. Look at the stuff that I can do. That makes complete sense in this kind of climate that we live in now where we're Richard so Dawkins surrounded. Richard Dawkins wouldn't be having it, bro. Bro, he would have it, bro. He would be like, yes, that makes oh, sense. Oh, yeah, actually, he'd be like, yeah, I can see you, therefore. I can see okay. it because I can see it because therefore, that's a, that's what they do. And this is what I mean. Like, their theory is that, yeah, if the aliens came today and said to us that we, that they created us and, uh, that you know, we're, the, we're, we're products of their sort of technology, whatever, and look at the stuff that they can do for us and what they can provide for us. And, you know, oh, yeah, we built pyramids and we did whatever. Like, if they could be told that, they would believe that, if you know what I mean, because they would, quote unquote be proven that and this is it yeah yeah um anyway mad but, mad bro i like, mean why not right why not i mean even um ibn kathir in his book uh, al bidai wa nihaya you know because bidai wa nihaya it's like from the beginning of what humans know anything about until the akhirah basically right mm-hmm. uh, so he he's got in the beginning he's got a like he puts everything there, yeah? A lot of it is not uh, sahih, but he just puts it there just because this right. is, it is a narration. doesn't mean it's sahih, right? And he's yeah, got yeah. stuff there about different creatures that lived before humans, before jinn. And uh, even I think he says that uh, when Allah created um, Adam and then the, the angels were like, you know, why would you create who's going to spread blood? Uh, spread, yeah, 
um, spill blood. And uh, I think it's Ibn Kathir, he said that, uh, they said that because of the previous experience they had of these previous creatures on earth. And yeah. they, he's even got names for these creatures. Like, I think it comes from Israeliat or something, but he's like, got like proper, de some decent detail yeah, yeah, about yeah. these things. I remember things. the reason, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, it's nothing, you know. Yeah, but it's I think like, why not, right? It's like I think this, actually, Bill Axe, it's like humans feel too confident that they know everything on this planet, mm, right? Exactly. Whereas, like, there's plenty of stuff in the in the deep jungles and deep in the sea that we don't know yet. So why not? You know, why not? I was speaking when I was speaking to my wife about this yesterday. You know, I said to her like, I tell, I, I'm really excited about it. I'll be honest, like I'm excited <laughs> about all this stuff because. But this is it. Like, there's this discourse online, at least mm. I've seen, and a lot of a lot of Muslims I speak to are like, "Oh, don't let that stuff weaken your iman," kind of stuff. Or, and they're online, at least from non-Muslims, like, "Oh, this is going to obliterate religion," and blah blah blah. And I don't know, but for me, it just increases my iman way, way mm. more when I find something unexplainable and something so fascinating. I don't mm. see this conflicting, and I'm not, you know, what, how would what it conflict? Well, I don't thoughts. get that. Well, this is because the. The discourse, mm. at least on a subconscious level, is like the earth is the the be all end all for humans, and this whole thing is us. And you know how the dean, for example, will focus on the humans and how focus on us and focus on we mm. are part of this story of you know Adam Ali and them all the way to the day of judgment. Mm. And within that overarching story, it's just about us, you know. Yeah. So when when you've got this extra thing, it's like, mm. well, I don't get it. However, however. However, if you are the if you think deeply about it, we are from what we understand is that the first heaven could potentially encompass the whole universe that we can observe, if you know what I mean. Because mm. above that is going to be stuff that is, you know, uh, shielded away from us with the veil that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put on the unseen. Okay, mm. um, so technically. There could be nothing if it was a jinn. If it was, you know, in terms of jinns, another being that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has already spoken about. Then it's not, and if they've jinns have existed before humans, because that's what we're under the, that's what we're kind of under the impression of that jinns have existed before humans, in the sense that shaitan, if you of the, I'm going to get political here because I was reading about iblis and shaitan and stuff, and there's actually, I never knew this, but there's like a difference of opinion almost valid difference of opinion that shaitan may have been an angel origin. And I know it sounds crazy. I never knew that. There's actual, like, oh. I can't, I need to look it up because there was ulama that were of, ulama that me and you would take every day if in terms of their, oh yeah, so like, Imam Tabari, for example, mm. who did, you know, the, the great tafsir of the Quran, uh, yeah, tafsir of the Quran, he was of the opinion that shaitan was, a, was an angel. Mm which is what I read the other day. And I was so shocked to even read that, that then it kind of changed my view on, no, it didn't change my view on shaitan, but changed my view on this, of how little I know and how like, I just assume yeah. the most popular opinion is the right one. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whilst I think it was like Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah was of the view that he was a, he was a jinn. And I just thought, Oh, these are two names I thought would have been on the same side of the fence as opposed to, mm opposing on this sort of thing but mm. they, but they both provide their evidences and you can see why they would say that based on that but you know anyway anyway i can't remember what i was saying now but what I was, yeah what i was saying is like if they're a precursor so jinns are precursors to humans and the first heaven is could potentially be to you know the entire observable universe then what is stopping the jinn from being you know not just tied to this earth but can be and travel with it. And, you know, we see how, uh, and Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran about meteorites being rujum al shayateen or shooting stars being rujum al shayateen. Mm. They have to actually, they could be, be in that sphere, in that sort of world, in that, uh, above the above just this earth and, yeah. you know, be struck down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So mm. anyway, I'm not mm. trying to turn the Quran into like a scientific, you know, <laughs> the Quran isn't a scientific, uh, not scientific book. I don't want to say that, but, you know, it's not something that relies on uh, observable evidences for us to believe in it. We believe in the Quran because of the the the, the miracle of what it is, and what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent messages reinforcing yeah. this message again and again and again. Yeah, but you, yeah, but what I'm trying to bro, say ultimately, you know, yeah, mm. it, not ultimately, UFO, I'm just trying to say be, it doesn't. A UFO could be non-intelligent as well, surely. 
Yeah. Right? yeah. So it doesn't even have to be like, oh, Allah focused on humans in the Quran, the message is for humans. So these other creatures would interfere with that. No, like maybe uh, even this technology you're talking about, like if you see a chameleon changing color, right? Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah, the exactly, first time you exactly. saw it, you might say, you think. yo, that's mad technology. Yeah, exactly. That's just it. You don't know if it's like a biological thing that we're observing. Like unidentified flying object could just be some sort of biological creature, yeah. animal, or whatever. Could be like some a big sort of organism. Bat. Big yeah. bat with like a super coronavirus <laughs> coming to drop that thing. <laughs> right, bro. I think we're going to have to wrap it up there. <laughs> we're going to end it on that bombshell. <laughs> uh, uh, I think, yeah, I need to go, bro, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yalla, guys. Thanks for joining us and bearing with us. Um, and by the way, the emails we got, Inshallah, we will deal with them at some point. Um, inshallah, in the next few episodes, we'll have a few guests on. Inshallah. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Go to mindheistpodcast.com if you want to send us emails um, or anonymous kind of messages, comments, suggestions, feedback, then please do that. Uh, if you'd like to help us out, because we do need some, some help in terms of promoting the podcast. So if you love the podcast, you think more people should be listening to and it would benefit them, um, then email us definitely. And you can go to mindhousepodcast.com. Um, like we put a few hours into this every week. If you could put a few hours in, then that would really help definitely. Like maybe even as much as us creating this helps the podcast, like you helping promote it would help it reach maybe more, you know, more people. So um, yeah, get in touch if you would like to do that. And uh, yeah, that's everything from me. I think my internet's cool. Kind of... It's all glitching now. Right yeah. at the end. The... Okay, Mohammed, sign us off. Well, I, I that means internet is, is, is dying. Oh, um, keep keep your eyes to the skies. There could be more out there. <laughs> 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 oh, I can set out to live on a cat. <laughs>